Hi guys, in this video, we'll be discussing the code shift status 90. So we'll be discussing the first four problems from dev one that is printing binary array, empty palindrome, crushed apples and and a balance, balance scale and sum of goodness. So this would be a pretty small video because the problems are pretty simple. So it shouldn't take long. I'm not really sure why they uh, like gave such simple problems for dev one. But anyway, so the very first problem that is printing binary states that you are given with the binary array B and all the elements are either zero or one. That's actually the basic definition of a binary array. Now, what we have to do is that uh, we firstly have to calculate its score. So what's the score? The score of a binary array is basically the number of digits that show a transition. Now, what do I mean by transition? So basically, if we go from one, one to a zero or zero to a one, then the consecutive elements won't be equal, right? So that would add a score to our final score. And uh, then we have to print another array that should not be similar to the array they have already given us, but their score should be same, right? So how would we do it? A very simple approach is that we can invert the array and print it out. Because what would actually happen is that if we are having a one and we replace it with a zero, and if we are having a zero and we replace it with a one, the number of transitions actually remain same. Because in the original array, let's say we are going from one to zero, then in the uh, answer array or the, in the resultant array, we'll be going from zero to one and vice versa. If we'll be going from zero to one, we'll be uh, going from a one to zero in the resultant array. So the number of transition remains the same and hence the total score would also remain the same. So that's what I've done. So if you are having a value one, you print a zero. If you're having a value uh, zero, you'll print a one. And that is a valid solution. So a very basic problem. Let's move to the next one. So the next prop uh, problem is anti palindrome. So the problem states that a string T is called a semi palindrome. If you can rearrange the characters of T to make it a palindrome. So we'll be given a string T, uh, string S, let's say, and uh, we can form any permutation out of it. And after for, uh, forming that permutation, if it's a valid uh, palindrome, then the string is called semi palindrome. Now our task is to make the string a anti palindrome. Anti palindrome would basically mean that there's no way of making a palindrome just by rearranging the digits. And in order to make that anti palindrome, we are allowed to do some amount of operations, or we can say that we have to minimize the number of operations required to make it anti palindrome. So how would we do it? Now, very basic uh, observation can be used over here. For example, in any palindrome, all the digits appear twice, right? Or we can say it appears in pairs because if you are, let's say, having a A over here and there are some elements, then at the end also you will expect a A because the first half is a mirror, mirror image of the second half in a palindrome, right? So that's uh, because of that, the, uh, the characters appear in pairs or you can say that the uh, frequency is actually even except for the case wherein you are having a string of odd length, right? So let's say they are all A's. Then we can have another element with a single frequency or with an odd frequency. So even this would be a valid palindrome, right? If this is B, right? Even this is a valid palindrome over here, you are having a B, A, A, B, A, A, B. Over here, the frequency of B is three, which is an odd number. However, this is still valid because the middle element need not have a mirror image to either its left or to its right, correct? So only one character can have odd frequencies. So this may, makes our uh, task simpler. So what we can do is we can calculate the number of elements having odd frequencies. And then we can say that if the number of elements having odd frequencies is already greater than one, in that case, it's already not an anti palindrome, right? So we can print that no amount of operations are required. Correct. Now what's the other case that we need to see? Now other case could be that uh, the entire string is made up of a single character, right? So the entire string is made up of occurrence of a single character. In that case, what would happen is that let's say we are having some characters and I change the character to B, let's, or let's say all the characters are A and I change the character to B. Now, if the string is actually of odd length, right, then B can actually be placed in the middle and this would still form a valid palindrome. So in that case, I'll have to perform one more operation, right? So maybe I'll create, make the string C. Now there's no way of uh, making this entire string a semi palindrome or a valid palindrome, right? However, if the number of characters are already even, then just create uh, changing a single character actually works because if the number of characters are even, there's no middle element. If there are no mid middle elements, where would you even place this element which we have changed, right? So in this case, it would be valid. So we'll check that, that if the size of the map is one, so this basically means there is only one, uh, there's only one character that is repeated again and again in the string, right? If that's the case, and if the length of this uh, string is odd, then we have a middle element. So we'll have to change at least two elements. Else we can change a single element and make it uh, anti-palindrome, right? 
else for every case that now remains right so that now the cases that would remain is that uh, we'll have a single middle element or we'll have zero middle elements so on and so forth just changing a middle uh, single element would actually work so you can simply print one over here and this would also work this is a valid solution let's move to the next problem that is crushed apples now i won't be going through all of this uh, apple gibberish i'll try to simplify this problem for you and yeah it's not a tough problem but i'll still simplify so what this change is that you have a number m and you have to make n out of it right now the way you have uh, you have to make n from m is that if m is even right then you can divide it into two parts because if m is even then you can divide it by 2 so you'll get m by 2 and m by 2 right and you can keep performing this so basically it would uh, form like a tree that you will be having m then you will be having two m by twos and you can have four m by fours from it and so on and so forth right now you can add up all of these numbers in any fashion possible so you can add one m by two from here and maybe like from this tree you will add one m by four so on and so forth right and you have to create n right so this is what we wanted to do a very simple problem so the worst thing we can say is that if m is equal to n in that case the answer obviously exists right the next scenario is that if m is odd now we already checked that m is uh, like m uh, like m is not equal uh, is not equal to n had it been equal to n we would have returned over here now if m is greater than equal to n uh, sorry uh, if your n is greater than m then there's no way you can like decrease m and take n from out of it right because in an operation you can just divide it by 2 that's the only operation you can do correct so that there's no way you can make n out of m or if your m is odd then also you cannot even break it further so in both of the scenarios the answer would be no if this is not the case then let's start dividing it so we'll divide m by 2 right and now we'll keep performing this operation till the time your m is greater than 0 right so we'll check if your n is greater than equal to m then you'll say n minus equal to m right or you'll subtract the value of m from n if your uh, m is odd then you cannot break it down further so you'll uh, exit this particular loop at the end you'll see that if n is equal to zero then print a yes else no now some of you might be confused that why would this work so this looks pretty greedy to you and why would this work the simple logic is that let's say you are having a number maybe like 24 right so 24 gets converted to 12 then 12 gets converted to 6 right and 6 gets converted to 3 right and then 3 cannot be converted further now this uh, simple thing is that if you are having a digit that is over here let's say over here right so the the digits of over here could be from 13 to tw uh, 23 right now if you can uh, if you can uh, can you make any digit that lies in this range you can only make a digit in this particular range if you can subtract uh, subtract 12 from here what do i mean by that so if it's uh, let's say if it's greater than 12 if it's greater than 12 right so then you can also uh, you can verify that all the digits that are less than 12 won't fo form anything that is greater than 12 so what uh, like that sounds gibberish right what do i mean by that so all the digits to the uh, to the right of 12 over here would actually form a number or would sum up to a number that would be less than 12 in order to get this proof you can also use the uh, binary numbers so in case of binary numbers also if you are having the numbers like 1 2 4 8 16 then 32 and so so on so forth right now the sum of all the numbers to the left of a binary number doesn't sum up to that number or it's equal to the number minus one for example if you sum up all the number to the left of eight you get a seven if you sum up all the numbers to the left of 16 you'll get a 15 if you sum up all the numbers to the left of 32 you'll get a 31 right so in no case in no scenario would you be able to come up with a number that is greater than it so had if your number is greater than 12 then obviously you need to subtract 12 from it right because after 12 is gone the numbers that would be remaining would uh, remaining would not sum up to 12 right and why is the binary idea valid over here because over here also you are dividing by 2 over here you also you are dividing by 2 so 32 divided by 2 is 16 16 divided by 2 is 8 now i can give a mathematical proof for this but that but that doesn't really help because it's a very simple thing so i won't be giving a mathematical proof if you require you can google it up and i'm sure you'll be able to find it cool so yeah that that's something i'll be doing at the end my goal was that my n should become equal to zero if my n is already equal to zero then i'll print a yes i'll else i'll print a no cool so yeah that's it for this problem let's move to the last problem so the last problem is give me a second let me just copy it to my discord yep 
okay so my last problem is uh, sum of goodness right so what this uh, what sum of goodness states is that you are given a array a right with n elements now you can form any uh, sub uh, any sub sequence from it now what's the sub sequence we can keep any element or we can uh, remove any element so technically there are 2 to power n sub sequences because for every element you are having two choices either to keep it or to remove it however we are not considering the empty uh, like the empty sub sequence that basically happens when you consider the removal of every element so basically you are left with no elements so we are ignoring that one possibility so basically 2 to power n minus 1 non empty sub sequence are uh, sub sequences are possible right now out of this 2 to power n minus 1 uh, non empty sub sequences we define a score now how do we define a score the score basically is the number of uh, the score basically is defined as if we sort the array right in non descending order then if the element is at its correct position uh, or if the element i right let's say the element at i is v of i if v of i is equal to i then we get a score for it for example if this is the array or this is a sub sequence that we get and we sort it so we get this particular sub sequence out of uh, we get this particular array after sorting now we have one is at its correct position so is two so is three but this three is not at its at its correct position because this position is four right the index of this position considering one base indexing would have been four but the element is three so we don't get a score for this we get a score for five as well so the goodness of s is four right now for all the sub sequences possible we have to tell what's the back, uh, what's the uh, total score and since this number can be large we have to print the answer 10 to the power 9 plus 7 so how would we do it it's actually a very simple problem and uh, that uh, take away over here is that whenever you are having such such problems wherein you have to uh, print the score of a sub sequence right or you have to work with sub sequences and ha you have to come up with the final answer or the final score most of the times what you can actually do is that you can think of the problem in terms of contribution so you will say that okay this particular element you will pick any element so let's say the element 2 how much can it contribute to my final score in all of the sub sequences included if you work in that fashion and let's say if you are able to calculate the contribution of 2 on all of its sub sequence in order of one time right then in uh, for all the elements you will be able to do it in order of n time right and then you will you will be having a solution that would be of order of n if you try to go through the this process of generating all the sub sequences and getting the scores then the time complexity actually becomes n into 2 to the power n and looking at the constraints you will definitely know that that won't work that is actually very big number so that definitely won't work so you can't go the, down that path so let's discuss this problem in brief so what i'm going to do is that i'm going to use the contribution technique over here now how do i use the contribution technique firstly i'll sort it now why sorting important because once i sort it then if i'm standing at element i right i know that the smaller uh, okay smaller elements than me are basically i minus 1 right so uh, this is, is considering one base indexing if you are using zero base then uh, this is in, uh, like considering zero base indexing if you are consi uh, considering one base then you can get rid of it cool anyway so now what what you can uh, say is that if you are at the element i right how many numbers do you require to the left of it so basically its value is v of i right so now let's say your number is 1 so basically for one you don't need any ele elements to the left of it correct so you'll say that the number of elements required would be 0 for example now here the element could have been 3 So you'll say that okay, you require three minus one. That is two elements to the left of it, because you require something like one, one, three, or like one, two, three, like one, one, three, or one, two, three, or maybe like two, two, three. Be because if you are having vi minus one elements to the left of it, only then this element would be at its correct position, or the element v of i would be at the correct position. So you definitely require these many elements. Now, how many elements do you actually have to the left of you, or which are actually smaller? so we already know that okay uh, vi minus 1 elements are required but how element how many elements can i actually uh, do i actually even have so i have a total of i elements right so these are the elements because i had already sorted it so all the elements to the left of me are actually smaller than me so i elements are smaller than me then the number of ways to choose uh, required elements from the available elements can be given by ncr or basic uh, combinatorics so combinations would be would be able to give uh, give us that so i have this uh, custom implementation for ncr so i utilize that okay yeah so i utilize that and then i say so these are the number of ways of selecting required elements from the available elements 
but what to uh, what about the elements to the right of me now all the elements that are to to the right of me have equal probabilities right or uh, i can say they are, they are independent so they can either be present or they can be absent or in other terms they have both uh, like i can choose from both the possibilities of either including any of those element or excluding any of those element so basically they are having two choices each element element is having two choices so that would be given by 2 to the power number of elements to the right of me because every element is having two choices so that basically becomes 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 right basically n minus right okay elements to the right so the elements to the right is basically n minus i minus 1 if you are standing in the ith element and we are considering zero with indexing right so these are uh, these many possibilities are there so i'll multiply it because these are the uh, possibilities of getting the elements to your left these are the possibilities of getting elements to your right we'll multiply these two and we'll store them in rest and since this number can actually be pretty big you have to take a modulus one other thing so if you use the custom implementation of a power function this would definitely overflow because your n actually over here or this particular term can actually be up to 10 to power 5 right so if you calculate 2 to the power 10 to power 5 right or you can say it like this and this is a fairly big number it's, there's no way it's it's going to fit the max value can actually fit in an integer is 2 to the power okay so it's 32 and the max value can actually fit in a long long even is 2 to the power 64 right it's not even 32 it's 32 minus uh, 32 minus 1 and 64 minus 1 so these are the max values you can actually fit now if you are trying to fit such a big number right so this is basically five zeros like if you are trying to fit such a big number it's definitely going to overflow and give you an error so always have your custom implementation for power function for such uh, problems so i do have my custom implementation here is it so i utilize that and then i print the result cool yeah so that's it for the video i hope you understood the solution uh, solutions if there are still any doubts then let me know in comment section below cool guys thanks a lot for watching this video bye bye